We very often talk about the ingredients that you should have as part of your skincare regimen and what exactly products you should be applying to your skin so you look beautiful and young and you can combat the signs of aging. We also talk about the sun, how damaging it is and how you should avoid it at all costs and hide into a cave or shower with a sunscreen and that's all great. But I do argue that about 50% of the whole anti-aging battle is actually food, diet, and lifestyle. So today I wanna to talk to you about the foods that you should probably be avoiding in order to look younger and to battle the signs of aging. Now the best part about this is these foods are not exactly great for your health or your waistline, by the way. So here, two birds, one stone. Hi, I'm Desi Stark and welcome to my channel where we talk about luxury skincare, beauty, and lifestyle products. Number one, sugar. It's always sugar. I'm sorry. And it's not just any sugar. It's mostly processed sugar. Although I do have to add to that, it's excessive sugar. Nobody's saying that you should avoid sugar at all costs. Nobody's saying that you shouldn't be eating apples or blueberries or blackberries or any kind of berries or cherries or any of those. But excessive amount of fruit is also sugar. So what exactly happens when you eat a lot of sugar? When you eat a lot of sugar, the body has to go through a process that's called glycation. The body has to process that sugar. So what exactly is glycation? Well, during glycation, the sugar molecules bind to collagen and elastin fibers and make them very, very stiff and prone to damage and premature aging. The one product that I found in the past that actually combats that and helps with that is Serum Eglica by Biologic Recharge. One of my favorite serums. It's always a top shelf when it comes to my skincare because I do like my apples. Now I did say excessive sugar consumption, but here's the problem with that. Sugar is highly addictive. I'm sure you've heard that before, but sugar is kind of like a drug. Let me prove that to you right now. If I put a box of Godiva chocolates in front of you, would you be able to eat just one piece? Would you take two, three, or would you eat the whole box? I'd probably eat the whole box. So when it comes to sugar, probably best to avoid it, or I'll give you a tip the way that I do it. I usually have a, a dedicated day once or twice or three times a month that I do allow myself a piece of cheesecake, a tiramisu or some Nutella, whatever it is I want, but I don't do it excessively and I try to kind of regulate the amount because if you consume sugar every day, it becomes habitual and because it's highly addictive, you will not be able to stop. So with processed sugar especially, probably best not to have it at all. Fruit is always a good alternative. I like, as I mentioned, I like my apples. I also like a variety of berries. They're actually really good antioxidants. And they also contain fiber, which is good for your gut. So you can have a piece of fruit a day, as long as it's not more than that. Number two, nightshade vegetables. Vegetables, who knew that vegetables can actually cause premature aging? Well, there's a specific group within the vegetable families and it's called nightshade vegetables and that's tomatoes, potatoes, aubergines, also ashwagandha, although ashwagandha is actually a spice. I know ashwagandha has been very, very popular within the last, I would say, 10 years. They do add a lot of ashwagandha in all those sports drinks and good for you, healthy drinks. And nightshade vegetables, unfortunately, can contribute to inflammation in the body. And some people have a high sensitivity to nightshade vegetables or that family of vegetables, so they should probably avoid them. Now, I do have to mention that a lot of people do not have an issue with nightshade vegetables, but a large amount of people do actually have sensitivity towards that. Nightshade vegetables contain a certain compound that causes a reaction to a lot of sensitivity to a lot of people. So make sure that you're not one of those people who are sensitive towards nightshade vegetables. And the way that you test yourself is uh, just stop eating nightshade vegetables for a couple of weeks and then start introducing, let's say, tomatoes to your diet for a couple of days and see how your body reacts. If you start waking up with inflammation, with puffiness and etc., then yes, you are unfortunately one of those people that are sensitive towards nightshade vegetables. So you may want to consider not eating them. I'll put a complete 
list of nightshade vegetables underneath so you can kind of scroll through the list it's not a lot of them so it wouldn't be a big loss to your diet to not eat tomatoes and potatoes and aubergine and ashwagandha and maybe there's a few more but best is to actually test yourself three fried and processed foods now fried and processed foods contain a high amount of trans fats unhealthy fats and i have to tell you out of the whole list here this is probably the worst thing after sugar but this is probably the second worst thing that you can do not only to your skin but also to your whole body i can honestly tell you that i don't even remember the last time that i ate anything fried i just don't eat anything fried and i feel like if i eat something fried right now my stomach would probably hate me and will make me pay for it for a couple of days so don't eat anything fried that's the bottom line i think your waistline will thank you you feel happier also fried foods and processed foods do contribute to a lot of inflammation in the body and oxidative stress and oxidative stress actually causes a lot of wrinkles a lot of lines a lot of sagging definitely fried and processed foods do accelerate your aging process for alcohol and i have some good news for you here we are again talking about excessive consumption of alcohol nobody says that you can have a glass of wine here and there or your favorite tequila once a month or whatever it is so what's the definition of excessive well we are talking about maybe once twice a day maybe even a couple times a week that's probably excessive alcohol consumption and i think nobody needs to define that for you i think you already know if you're in that group so what alcohol does to you is it dehydrates you tremendously and with prolonged exposure to excessive alcohol consumption unfortunately your skin becomes very dull and lackluster and also of course excessive amounts of alcohol can contribute to inflammation in the body which inflammation is always anything that causes inflammation in your body causes you to age prematurely so you have to avoid anything that causes inflammation period sodium rich foods i think we all know that that high sodium foods that are rich in in high sodium content usually cause puffiness and water retention and you do want to avoid them especially right before you go to sleep because during the night you're horizontal and this is when the water kind of equally distributes through the body so of course it's going to go in your face and over time that repetitive inflammation could potentially cause wrinkles and sagging of your face now I do want to give you a, a big kind of pro tip here. This is something that I've been playing for a very, very long time, but sometimes the way that you combine certain food groups can contribute to inflammation in the body and could potentially contribute to premature aging. So what do I mean by that? So we have four main food groups, right? We have carbs, protein, fiber and sugar if you are to eat all of these food groups in one sitting a lot of people have a sensitivity and the body cannot process all of these food groups at once and the body freaks out and causes inflammation because that's how the body defends itself if you go to dinner let's say and if you order a steak and some broccoli or a salad on the side if you stop here that's great now you're combining protein with fiber this is my usual diet this is what a paleo diet is all about it's all about combining protein with fiber or fiber with carbs but not all three of them at the same time so if you order just the steak and the broccoli you're great but if i have some bread with it now i'm adding carbs so now i have protein fiber and carb and then maybe I have a dessert, maybe I have a tiramisu or a chocolate cake. So now I'm adding sugar to the whole mix as well. So now in one sitting, I've had all four food groups and my body definitely freaks out. I'm unfortunately one of these people that if I consume all four food groups in one sitting, my body freaks out. So I avoid that at all costs. And this is something that it took me actually a very, very long time to learn. Also, a lot of people have gut sensitivity towards combining all four or even three of the food groups. So try to combine two at once, or maybe you add a third one, but never all four of them at the same time. 
time. So the best combination is actually if you have fiber with every meal, which is a lot of green stuff, a lot of vegetables, and then you add either a protein, which is uh, eggs, uh, fish, uh, meat, etc. Or you combine fiber with, with carbs for vegans and vegetarians. So once again, this is something that it took me a lot of years of experimentation and different combinations and different diets. And yes, I have tried every possible diet out there. The best thing for me is a modified paleo diet. I have found out what works for me and that's kind of a modified paleo diet. And I say modified because I'm not an extremist. Sometimes I do allow myself some bad things because life is too short. There's certain things that I can justify in moderation. So I do allow myself once in a while to be bad. And these are the five foods and, and tips. Actually, there was a sixth tip in there. But so these are the tips and foods that I would kind of be mindful of how you proceed in the future in order to prevent further damage to your skin. And with food, unfortunately, is one of these things that you see the damage pretty much immediately. Once again, unlike with the sun, the sun takes years and years and years to cause dark spots or hyperpigmentation or etc. But foods, they have immediate impact on your skin, immediate. You literally wake up in the morning and you're all puffy. And sometimes even if you're dehydrated, you could be even wrinkly. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up and I will see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye.